All right. So my name is Alex Alanis. I'm with On Point TC. And uh, today is February 16th of 2022, uh, roughly about six o'clock in the evening. And uh, today we'll be doing uh, Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act or RESPA. Um, I thought it was a good topic to go over and to cover. I'm not an attorney or an accountant, but I do like to share uh, information. So anything that is said here on these presentations, uh, please verify um, either through, through literature and or your broker, okay? Um, and if you happen to have an attorney friend, you know, it's always a good idea to, uh, to uh, reference anything that, that you're questioning or have a question about um, or wondering about. Okay, um, today there are 20 slides to go over, um, three or four of which are just real quick, you know, like the ending slide, you know, the YouTube slide, uh, uh, the affiliates and, and, and uh, uh, resources slide. So realistically, there's probably more like 15 or 16 slides on this presentation. So um, today we'll be talking mainly about RESPA compliance. So you can do me a favor, guys, and make sure you're muted on your end. That way we have no background noise. Just try to have um, as little interruptions as possible. There's my information. If you, if you should want to contact me or get a hold of me, um, if you can and or want to, you can uh, ask a question in the chat room. I'll try to get to your questions after each slide. And... Uh, uh, if not, you're welcome to chime in. Uh, just make sure you mute after, your, after you have your question, okay? And uh, thank you guys for logging in early today. I appreciate that. I assume there'll probably be three or four more people logging in. And uh, be sure to invite anybody who you think might benefit from these, from these uh, uh, presentations. Um, as you know, these are also being recorded, so you're welcome to also invite them to subscribe to the channel. And the link comes over on the email that I send out every week, and I'll, I'll mention that again closer to the end of the presentation, okay? Uh, any questions or comments? All right, so let's get started. Re Real Estate Settlement and Procedures Act. And Larry, um, you, you probably know a lot about this, so feel free to, to chime in. Um, <clears throat> Let's start with um, the definition. Okay, so what is RESPA? RESPA was signed into law in December of 1974 and became effective on June 20th, 1975, right? Despite numerous changes and amendments, its intent is to inform consumers of their settlement costs and prohibiting kickbacks that can increase the cost of obtaining a mortgage. The rest, RESPA covers loans secured with a mortgage placed on one to four family residential properties. Originally enforced by HUD, RESPA enforcement responsibilities were assumed by the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, when it was created in 2011. So originally HUD was, um, or Housing and Urban Development was, was enforcing the RESPA laws but now those have been flipped over and now the responsibility is taken over by the CFPB. Any questions or comments? All right, so moving right along. Um, so let's move on to def the definition. On November 20, 2013, the US CFPB issued a final rule to integrate disclosures and regulations required by RESPA and, and the Truth in Lending Act, which is and we're going to be using a lot of acronyms today. It's Truth in Lending Act, or TILA, T-I-L-A, okay? So, um, uh, you know, I like to use acronyms a lot. For me, it's it's a way to remember what, the, what, it, what it is that they're talking about. Uh, it gets a little more difficult when we're not using it every day. Um, so these, these acronyms are a little bit more... Uh, a little bit harder to remember because we don't use them every day. But when you see TILA, you know it's Truth in Lending Act. The final rule called TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosure or TRID, right? So we have T, TILA, 
RESPA R, integrated I, and then disclosure, right, D, or TRIG. Integrates existing disclosures with, with new requirements from the Dodd-Frank Act to improve consumer understanding of the mortgage process, aid in comparison shopping, and help prevent surprises at the closing table. TRID was finally implemented after various delays on October 3rd of 2015. And I actually had a show on that uh, when it first came in um, and we talked about that. So uh, that will probably be coming up here in weeks, weeks to come. Any questions or comments on that slide? So we have we have TILA Truth and Lending, and we have TRID, um, the TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosures, TRID. So short explanation of the Dodd-Frank Act. <laughs> short explanation. <laughs> uh, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act was signed into federal law by President Obama on July 21st, 2010 passed as a response to the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. It brought the most significant changes to the financial regulation in the U.S. since the regulatory reform that followed the Great Depression, or since the, the regulatory reform that followed the Great Depression. An act to promote the financial stability of the U.S. by improving accountability and transparency in the financial system to end too big to fail to protect the American taxpayer by ending bailouts, to protect consumers from abrasive financial service practices and for other purposes. So just to kind of uh, recap on that a bit, we have to remember a lot of the talk that was going on during the, the mortgage meltdown and how everybody was kind of pointing the finger at the lenders and talking about what, what, what they called predatory lending. So the predatory lending that we're talking about was everybody pretty much telling the lenders, hey, you, you um, gave me a loan that I really wasn't supposed to have or get. And even though that's not what RESPA is talking about, but that was the environment that, that we were in at that time, which caused this regulation. It caused... Uh, even, even though the regulation existed, they, they actually, what they did is they, 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 it brought more of a limelight to the activity, okay? Any, any questions or comments on that? Okay, so I did this, so we can kind of remember um, the acronyms, okay? So RESPA is Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, right? TILA is Truth in Lending Act. So these are, these, are all, uh, these are all regulations, right? And then the integration of those disclosures now with Truth in Lending and RESPA is TRID, okay? So now we have the CFPB, which is a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And then we have the, the Dodd-Frank Act, which is not an acronym, uh, created by Chris Dodd and, Bar and Barney Frank. And then, and then we have an acronym that was actually created by the regulators um, to try and remember uh, why all of this exists, right? So it's know before you owe, meaning that if, if you know what's happening and what's going on with your loan before you actually owe it, you can't point the finger at the lenders and say that it's predatory lending. So uh, this is a, a, an industry made up um, way of looking at it, right? Is KBYO, -K right? Know before you owe, right? So um, I don't know, Robert Slay, I don't know, you might want to take a picture of that because uh, of the acronyms. We don't, we don't use them every day. All right, so that said, um, we can keep moving here. Any questions or comments on, on, on those acronyms? So real estate brokers and mortgage companies occupy first-class seats on the train of home ownership. Uniquely situated at the crossroads, brokers and loan agents are at the front line. And that's true. 
these are these are the individuals that are literally uh, talking to the clients, which is us, right? We're talking to the clients, so we have a front row seat to home ownership. Real estate brokers and mortgage companies find themselves refers of settlement service business, right? So what what is settlement service business? Title and escrow companies are referees of settlement service business. So when we're talking about RESPA, right, Real Estate Settlement Services Pro Procedure, Procedures Act, right, or RESPA, those are considered, title and escrow are considered settlement services. So they become the referees, if you will, of um, almost like the police, right, of the industry when it comes to uh, agents and, and mortgage brokers who are dealing with the people firsthand. Any questions or comments on that? All right, so the first, the first we'll talk about what is prohibited by RESPA, okay? Section eight of RESPA prohibits a person from giving or accepting anything of value for referrals of settlement service business related to a federally related mortgage loan. And the, the, the probably the most important thing said here is anything that's related to a mortgage loan doesn't say anything else. So, so understand that an escrow company or a title company, right, uh, prohibits a person from giving or accepting anything of value for referrals of those services, right? And uh, I know that that most title reps are very, very cautious about that. Uh, they don't want to be reported, you know. They're very cautious about making sure that if somebody should bring something like that up, they have a, a good business idea. Hey, you know, why don't we try this? Most title reps and escrow officers or, or their escrow reps will say, oh, we can't do that because they know. They know they're not supposed to. Any questions or comments on that? So, so now we have the, the anti-kickback law of RESPA, right? Uh, federal related mortgage loans, any loan secured by a first or subsequent lien on a one to four family residential property, right? That includes refinances, purchase money mortgages, second liens, um, arms, which are adjustable rate mortgages, reverse mortgages and interest only mortgages. So that could be any of those. If any of those are, are, rela are related to uh, your client's um, inclusion, right? You, you cannot be giving kickbacks to the settlement services. Or, I'm sorry, the settlement services are not allowed to give kickbacks. Um, it excludes commercial loans, construction loans, temporary financing, property over 25 acres and business purpose loans. So any of those things, a, a title or, or a settlement service, escrow company, a right, settlement service, can uh, market themselves for those things. So, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm so thirsty to admit, it might be the weather. It's weird because it was really hot last week and now it's cold. So, so just uh, any, any questions or comments on the last one, on the last slide? No. So let's do a quick funny. See, you gave away 60 billion toys and didn't get one receipt. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I'll be nice that home buyer will be. Oh, I'm sorry. It'll be nice that that home buyer will be easier to understand, right? Once he understands how and when to implement trade, right? So here you have the lenders and the realtors kind of scrambling, and you have the trade imp implementation, which um, I think is uh, uh, 72 hours the disclosure period. Uh, and that's the reason for the hourglass there in the middle. But uh, uh, I thought that was that was a good uh, funny for the topic today because it's the truth. Um, even though I think it was a pretty good transition because I remember when all that happened, it was a pretty good transition. And now everybody's just kind of used to it. You know, we're, we're, we're getting the, the disclosures out from the lenders and, you know, they have their, their three-day period that they have to wait for. Uh, for them to uh, to sign and return them, but uh, uh, good stuff. So, any questions or comments? 
All right, so um, let's go through the exceptions, right? So uh, affiliated business arrangements, right? So ABAs are a way for real estate brokers and or agents to legally receive a share of the profits for mortgage financing and or title insurance when you purchase real estate. So what is an affiliated business arrangement? It's simply a disclosure to the buyer, pretty much telling them that, hey, you know what? I am a mortgage broker, but I also have an escrow company. And, and it, it, if you use my escrow company, I potentially am making a little bit more money than normal uh, because of that escrow company. But in the disclosure, it has to say that, and it also has to say that you, Mr. Buyer, have the right to choose whomever you like. So, so it, what, it's really saying two things. It's disclosing the company that you're uh, working with, and it's also telling them that they can use whoever they like. They, they don't have to use that company just because I'm referring them to that company, right? Now, if I'm insisting that they use that company, that's called steering, and that's not allowed, okay? But this is an exception to that, is if you use an affiliated business arrangement, um, you, you can now uh, profit from um, those arrangements, those business arrangements. You just have to disclose to the buyer, right? So section 8C2, a payment of a fee, attorney, title, or lender, a payment of a referral arrangement, an employer's payment to its own employees, which is obvious, and transactions on the secondary market. So uh, some of you who might be familiar with loans know that uh, uh, the companies that give out loans at some point run out of money, so they have to sell their paper in order to get more money to do more loans. Because quite frankly, they're making money on the um, origination of those loans, um, not just the interest. So that's uh, uh, an exception to uh, the RESPA rules, right? Uh, obviously a payment of a fee. So in other words, if you have, uh, to use an attorney or you have to use a title company or you have to use a lender, right? They're paying their fees. So obviously that's not uh, a referral, right? Th that's just their fee, right? Uh, payment of a referral arrangement. Like let's say you're doing something out of state and um, you have a referral arrangement with another agent, right? Uh, in another state, who, who happens to have uh, a relationship, say with an escrow company, okay? And then, and then the obvious one, the, the employer's payment of its own employees. Obviously, employees uh, don't work for free, so they are ex excluded from um, the original rule or, or pro, pro, the prohibition, right? prohibition of uh, those referral fees. So any questions or comments on that? So here are the five elements of Section 8A and the RESPA anti-kickback law, okay? So this is Section 8A says it is, it is illegal to give or receive anything of value, any arrangement or understanding to refer right, or, or, or the actual referral, it is illegal to give or receive any, uh, anything of value in terms of the settlement service, when we talked about escrow and title, in connection with a federal related mortgage loan, okay? And there's the important part. All five elements must be present. Anyone missing, it's not a violation. So. These, the, the funny thing about this is, is that, is that all, all of these things have to be present. So um, you, you, it would really, I would say it'd be difficult to try and prove uh, any wrongdoing, right, of a, of a uh, 
ill-gotten gain, if you will, a referral uh, service. Let's say an escrow company um, is out there, you know, giving referrals, right, or anything of value, right? But it's it maybe it's not related to a mortgage loan. And then once that once that element is not there anymore, it's no longer a violation. So it's just something to think about, right? So it's not as sticky as we think. Any questions or comments on that? So here's a, here's a quick uh, pop quiz. Which of the following is not a settlement service that is covered by RESPA? So which of the following is not a settlement service that is covered by RESPA? Okay, yeah, good. So it was, it was number two, right? The furniture movie, right? So let's, let's move on to the second uh, uh, quiz question. So under RESPA, a real estate professional may give in return for the referral of real estate settlement service business Which, which one of those is is okay to give and as a, as a <laughs> yeah thank you number one right it's <laughs> <So> thank you <laughs> thank you Robert Sully for for uh, answering those because Larry I know you know the answer to these so so chime in at any time but uh, for the most part uh, that's just a quick pop quiz uh, to provide uh, consumers, with cost information about the mortgage process, RESPA created the good faith estimate of the GFE and closing disclosures document RESPA requires that the closing disclosure form be provided to the, to the what? Which, which, which should the, the GFE or the closing disclosures should be provided to whom? It's actually the buyer that the buyer needs to have that information. And that's what we talked about earlier, um, that before uh, the RESPA or, or let's just say um, the TRID laws uh, were put into effect in 2015, okay, everybody was pointing the finger at the lender saying, well, you guys are being predatory. And it's mainly because they weren't being fully disclosed to the buyer. So it would stand to reason that if they're going to give out a disclosure, a good faith estimate disclosure, uh, along with the closing documents, right, the buyer has to has to see them and they have to sign them and give them back to escrow, right? So that's the reason why the buyer uh, needs to see those. In addition to reducing customer surprises at the closing table, the revised GFE and the CC are intended to make comparison shopping easier for consumers. To do that, the GFE lets consumers look at a proposed loan under all but one of these different scenarios. The loan as proposed, the loan with a lower interest rate, the loan with different underwriting terms, or the loan with lower settlement charges. So I'll read the question again. In addition to reducing consumer surprises at the closing table, the revised GFE and CC are intended to make comparison shopping easier for consumers. To do that, the GFE lets consumers look at a proposed loan under all but one of these different scenarios. So any idea which one that might be? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the loan with different underwriting terms. And that's because who would do that? Who, who would give them a different scenario with different underwriting terms? Underwriting terms would be the same pretty much with every lender because they're looking at FICO score, they're looking at income, they're looking at their, their income ratios, right? And it's just all about qualification, right? But, but when it comes to comparison shopping, you're, you are comparing interest rates and you are comparing the proposed loan, right? And you are comparing lower settlement charges. So that's the reason for uh, the GFE and the closing disclosure. Right, but they're certainly not showing you underwriting terms. 
those things are happening in the background. So, so thank you for that, uh, Robert. So, uh, any questions about that one? So another exception to the RESPA rules contained in Section 8 allows real estate professionals to receive compensation for <clears throat> filling out a mortgage application, telling a home inspector the address of the property to be inspected, the reasonable value of goods and services actually provided or performed, doing the same thing they have been paid to do as real estate professionals. So some of these answers are silly, but that makes the obvious one stick out. Yeah, so another another exception to the to the RESPA rules contained in Section 8 allows real estate professionals to receive compensation for the reasonable value of goods and services actually provided or performed. Why not? That's just reasonable, right? The word reasonable is the underlying uh, point here, right? And the idea is, is to be able to see what the value of the goods and services are and, and what they are. So number six, RESPA allows title companies to provide real estate professionals $50 for every client referred to the title company by the real estate professional, an entry and a contest to win a car for every $1,000 of premiums paid, tickets to a, a, base, a baseball game once a week for the entire season, notepads that have been imprinted with the title company's name and phone number. What, what do you say? Yeah, number four, of course. <laughs> and, and that's because we have stacks of them in our office, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the title reps, they come around and they that's what they give out. And it's because they can. That's, you know, it's not really something of value necessarily. It's, I mean, it is, but it's something that you can use. And, you know, it's, it's, it's advertising. I think that that's, uh, goes under that umbrella for the title companies. Is, is that they, they're advertising themselves. So is that really a thing of value? I mean, you know, it's questionable. And I think that that's why it's allowed, right? Any questions or comments on that? So the, the affiliated business provision, which is an exception to the general RESPA rule regarding compensation for referrals allows the real estate professional making the referral to receive a small referral fee the party making the referral to receive a return on its ownership interest in the company received the referral. And that, that one gets a little confusing. The buyer to avoid having to pay real, real property transfer tax, the seller to require buyers to use the seller's attorney. So what, what, what are we really saying here? The affiliated business provision, which is an exception to the general rule regarding compensation for referrals allows so remember that the, the affiliated business arrangement is simply a disclosure to the buyer stating, number one, that me as a broker or agent are affiliated with another business. And number two, you can pick whoever you want. So it's a disclosure. So uh, what, do you, what do you think is the answer to this one? Uh, the real estate professional making the referral to receive a small referral fee. Uh, I, I would say, uh, well, it's it's actually it's actually number two. Uh, the party making the referral to receive a return on its ownership interest. Because remember, uh, I might be a broker that owns a, an escrow company, right? So that that has to do with my ownership. And so let's just say I'm the broker, right? Uh, I have an ownership interest in the company and I'm receiving the referral. So that, that's the one exception to the rule, right? The penalty for Ill illegally giving and receiving a kickback, which is covered in Section 8 of RESPA, is up to 90 hours of community service, loss of real estate license, requirements to attend a RESPA education program, and a fine of $10,000 or up to one year in prison or both. I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll just answer that one for you. Yeah, number four. Uh, Larry, you answered that fairly quickly. Uh, 
Does that that sounds familiar to you? I can show you paperwork on all that stuff. Right I mean, on. even more and not up to ten thousand, but. Uh, also, whatever the fines are for the title person, they just had somebody that got uh, convicted of it, and the title company got fined a million dollars, and that was probably within the last couple of months. They're right now researching another person on this, and I don't know what the fine will be on it because they haven't uh, gone to court to settle it all, but it can get quite pricey, as well as people losing licenses. So whatever happens to the rep also happens to whoever they're dealing with. Yeah, so I'm assuming that, that that settlement that you talked about was probably for multiple um, uh, occurrences. It wasn't just, you know, a one-time deal. And, no, it was uh, years, probably decades of, of Oh, yeah. Happened. Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense to me, right? So so you have, you know, these individuals that are going out and, and they, they really uh, uh, tilt the playing field for the rest of the, the industry, right? When they're doing that, and 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 this is what makes it hard, right? So, I just wanted to include this uh, question in here because I thought it was important. Um, even though, like you said, there's probably a lot to talk about, but um, as it relates to real estate agents, this is just a, a, a the tip of the iceberg when it comes to some of this stuff. Um, when it comes to you know really not getting involved in this activity. So uh, any other questions or comments on that? Okay, so it looks like we're doing pretty good on time actually, um, 6.35 and we're already on final thoughts. So um, let's just go through the final thoughts real quick. RESPA along with Dodd-Frank Acts were designed to protect the consumer from lenders and agents causing prices on settlement services to increase. It stands to reason if the escrow and title companies must pay to stay in business, prices will go up. We should create relationships with numerous companies and spread the love, so to speak. Try to keep the industry of settlement service referrals spread out as to not making one stronger than the other, as this may inhibit weaker companies, which in turn promotes kickbacks. Don't do it without the proper know-how. So that said, uh, we'll go into the YouTube channel stuff real quick. Um, but I just wanted to mention that um, RESPA, we, we, don't, we don't look at it, um, I think, as real estate agents, uh, as very serious because, you know, who's really policing the industry? I mean, agents, I think, get, a lot, get a, away with a lot more just in their own business, not worrying, even worrying about the settlement services, right? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it does exist, and I think you know this this light exposure. You know, it it turned out to be probably end up being like a forty five minute class, but this light exposure to it, it it kind of uh, it, it you know it it breaks the the ice, if you will, on this activity because I do see it happen. Uh, I've seen it happen on on like Facebook, right, where. Uh, there was um, uh, this this particular time. There was uh, a real estate agent, and he was taking kickbacks from a inspection company, right? And uh, uh, in turn was uh, tied to an escrow company. And you know, I tried telling them that hey, this could possibly be a violation. Well, they all started getting mad at me for for just pointing it out, you know. They say, yeah, just go ahead and do whatever you want. You know, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. This and that. I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm potentially seeing some violations here, in terms of, of you know, you, what you guys are offering. They were offering uh, kickbacks if you happen to show up to this open house, um, and so you know, it was just some stuff that 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 uh, we all try to creatively try to advertise ourselves. Um, that just happens to be something that you don't want to go down that road. Don't use escrow and title companies as your go-to for your advertising. You know, don't, don't, it's, it's just not something that is, well, number one, it's regulated. It's not allowed. It's prohibited. Right. So um, just something to think about when it comes to that, that um, arena of things, because we all try to be creative you know, I talk about it here all the time, you know, be creative in, in your marketing and advertising. 
um, it doesn't mean that everything is allowed. So moving on, uh, there's my information again. You guys feel free to call me anytime. But if you're interested in viewing previously recorded presentations, please visit that channel. That link is included in the email reminder sent every week uh, for the training. So you guys, I believe, are receiving those emails. Uh, the link is at the very bottom. Um, so please do me a favor. If you haven't already done so, if you can't subscribe to the um, to the channel, and that way I can get credit for um, for the views. Okay, and feel free to share that too, guys. It's it's free. Uh, I have it out there. You know, again, one of the reasons why I do these classes is because I'm trying to tug. On if if we're in a tug of war, okay, with um, the the real estate agents that are out there that that are really basing their career on simply just a commission check versus their professionalism, okay? We're on the side of the professionalism and they're on the side of just wanting to get a check. They don't care what they do or how they do it. All they care about is getting that check. So they do anything they possibly can. They, they, they'll lie or step on whoever, uh, or lie to or step on whoever they feel they have to step on in order to get that commission check. And so I'm, I would like to be on the other side of that. OK, um, <clears throat> I would venture to say that those individuals will never bother to watch any of these presentations, which um, me being in the real estate industry now for 33 years, wish I had some of this stuff when I was uh, coming up the ranks. OK, that somebody had explained some of these things to me and uh, it would have really helped me uh, through some of the pitfalls that I actually went through. Uh, so I decided to share. So this is the reason why I tug that direction. And I'm hoping that you guys take the same position and get on my, on my side of the rope. Because let me tell you something. I am as interested as getting you guys a paycheck as the guys on the other side of, of the rope. The only difference is, is that I want to do it uh, professionally and knowledgeably, right? I want to do it with some legitimacy in what it is that I do. I'm not stepping on people. I'm not, I'm not uh, lying to people. Uh, you know, th those are not common professional practices. And, and so I would rather be on the side of tugging the rope, you know, this direction. Uh, and hopefully we win at some point. But for the most part, this is the reason why I have these, these presentations. And I like to share uh, you know, I have had those um, individuals kind of say, well, Alex, you know, you're not a teacher, uh, you're not a broker, uh, you're not this, you're not that. Um, hey, guys, you know what? I'm exercising my First Amendment right, freedom of speech, and I want to share with you guys uh, good information. I would say that uh, any of those individuals that, that are saying that, you know, I'm not a teacher or whatever, hey, challenge, come, come on the class and challenge what it is that I'm saying. Am I saying anything wrong? Am I saying anything, you know, that's hurtful or discriminatory or anything? I'm none of that stuff? You, you won't find any of that here. As a matter of fact, I, I enjoy having a, a dialogue with somebody and it's happened a few times. If you guys happen to remember, it happened a few times uh, where people ch kind of chimed in and they had an opinion about what, what we were talking about. And I welcome everyone's opinion. Uh, my opinion isn't always right. And, and I've never said that it was. My, my opinion is my opinion. And I want to hear your opinions because you know what that causes? It causes us to think. If, if, I, if, if we have two, three, four, five opinions in the same room, it causes us to think about what we're, what we're have concluded about something and maybe even change our mind. Imagine that. And that's why it's important because now what we've done is we've evolved into something better. If, 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 if uh, uh, we don't have those conversations, what happens is, is that nothing evolves. Evolution is very important to any industry. Because what do we want to do? We want to make it better. That's, that's the purpose. So this is the reason why 
uh, I try to make the, affi the affiliations that I do. This is the reason why I'm, I am out there sharing. This is the reason why I did the show. Um, I would really like to see things evolve into something bigger and better. There's absolutely no reason why us humans, we have the, the mind power, we have the brain power, okay, to make our situations better. And housing has always been a problem. We talk about the homeless. I hear it almost on the radio almost every single day when it talks about the homeless. I hear about, uh, about mortgage rates and I hear about housing uh, uh, problems constantly. We have to come together and we have to share our opinions on these things to try and make them better. This is why I'm here. So, so uh, understand that I'm on the side of professionalism and I'm on the side of helping others and sharing that information and evolving that real estate. Uh, uh, evolution of real estate. All right, guys. So um, anyway, we're at 644. We're actually doing really good on time. Um, there's uh, Mr. Larry's information. Uh, you can give him a call uh, anytime you like. Uh, he's with Old Republic Title and uh, a very good resource when it comes to uh, uh, title mainly, but he can also help you get business, right? Uh, give you some ideas on what to do and how to do it. Okay, so that's always good. Miss Liz Montes with Erie's Mortgage. She is uh, also a real estate broker. Uh, they actually, she owns a, uh, a DRE escrow here in the, in the building, but they're currently uh, here in the next couple months, they're going to become a, um, a licensed escrow. So it's no longer going to be a DRE escrow. They can accept outside work. So that escrow company is going to be something that's going to be hitting um, the market here pretty soon. There's Mr. David Plummer. He is uh, a real estate coach. He has his uh, meetings on Saturday mornings at 8.15 to 9.45. There's the meeting ID and the passcode. You guys are welcome to, uh, to go on that for free. And uh, I do endorse his product. He does have a really good uh, Saturday uh, meetings. Um, I'm, I don't always attend, but I do attend on occasion. Um, Dave also does charge for his real estate uh, motivational uh, coaching during the week. So if you guys uh, are interested, there's his information. Feel free to, to give him a call. And then there's Shamim with Property ID NHD reports uh, that we need to use on every transaction. Feel free to give her a call um, if you should have any questions on NHD. So anyway, that said, guys, we are actually something, this was a fast and easy one. And oddly enough, there's a, a, a light outcome, but for the most part, we were able to get it recorded and it will be on the, on the channel, on the YouTube channel here. And it's also on Rumble uh, here, probably tomorrow it'll be up. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, um, now would be the time. Other than that, I'm pretty much done for the evening. I thought it was a good topic to talk about. Um, there probably are some things I can expand on this particular uh, presentation. But like I said, uh, RESPA is not always on the tip of our tongues or, or on the forefront of our minds. And so we don't hear about it too much, but there are do's and don'ts when it comes to RESPA and, and uh, we shouldn't take it lightly. At the end of the day, uh, title companies cannot be giving out referrals. Escrow companies cannot be giving out referrals for business. Um, when it comes to mortgage loans. And we talked about uh, the, the five different rules that were there. So you guys can reference that if you like. But for the most part, I'm all done. Unless you guys have any other questions or comments or you guys that like to tell a story. Um, hey, you guys got anything? Thank you, Robert and Sully, for coming. Larry? No, really good. But thank you. It's interesting. Okay, well, you guys have a good evening. And... Uh, Next week, uh, I'm, I'm actually working on the expired listing presentation. I had to make some changes to it. I was going to do that today, but um, I had to make some changes to it. So um, it'll hopefully it'll be next week. But I, we, we do have about 10 other presentations that we did last year that I need to get recorded and on the books. So I'll be running through those. And then uh, the new ones that are coming up, the AVID, 
Uh, I'm going to add another one, which is procuring cause. Um, that that action came up now with uh, exclusive agency with the buyer, and uh, I think it's a good topic. So I'm going to be doing some of that stuff here coming up soon. So you guys have a good evening. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And uh, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank thanks, you again. Robert Sully. Thanks, Larry. See you soon. I'll see you guys.